So today I'm gonna to go through all the stocks that I bought last week and all the stocks that I sold last week. So there's a few to go through, quite active it was last week with the stock market going down and um, some big moves made. So we'll, we'll go through all these uh, today. First of all, the first thing I'm gonna get out of the way is that yes, I kind of look like a lobster again because I've been out in the sun all day uh, with work. So yeah, uh, before anyone gets the lobster jokes in or the Rudolph jokes in, I'm gonna get in there first. Second of all, a little bit disappointed because yesterday I brought out a video talking about uh, selling all of the stock and it did really well. But what's this about? 173 likes. This isn't even 10% of the audience watching the video couldn't even go and smash the like button. So before we go on to what I've been buying and selling, I'm going to pause the video. Smash the like button. Is it done? We'll get on to it. So. Uh, we'll go through everything today, what I've been buying and selling. If you do want instant updates, make sure you join the Patreon. I always post when I'm buying and selling companies in real time there, as well as the Discord, as well as two exclusive videos a week, sometimes even free. And if you do want to start investing, there's some links to some brokers in the description as well. Join through there and you get a free share on the free trade one and the stake one as well. So do check them out. So I'm going to try to spend a minute on them, maybe two minutes if I can. Um, if you want to see a full video on them, I probably have a full video on them somewhere. First of all, nice and quick, because we covered this one yesterday, uh, which is me selling. Uh, saying that I'm going to sell all of this stock which was Boeing basically uh, the overall recap on that video was to basically say the management yeah they are snoozing um, yeah they're not doing a great job and uh, because they're not doing a great job it made me a little bit nervous to carry on holding the company and I thought you know what if I'm not 100% sure on the management move away because management make or break an investment and that's what I did had a bit of a rough day uh, today actually so um yeah, um, even though it's a, obviously we're focusing on long term, in the short term, it doesn't look like too bad of a decision. I'm sure more than likely it would probably uh, recover that very quickly. But yeah, uh, it does look like at least I didn't uh, wait too long on this one. And uh, once again, it's just kind of getting hurt with the uh, surge in virus cases in the US. And um, yeah, a lot of these sort of companies are down a fair bit at the moment uh, that are related to travel. And uh, Boeing got hit by it. So that was the first stock that I sold last week. Totally sold everything in Boeing. Second stock that I sold, well, I sold 10% of my position in Shopify. So I've still got, a, this is still a big uh, company in my portfolio, but because basically what has happened recently, we've kind of, um, I don't know if I can zoom out a little bit, but you can see we just had a little bit of a bump up recently. I was up over 30% and you thought, you know what, um, it's gone up a fair bit. Um, it went from $1,000 to about 1000 you know, nearly 1,500. Thought, you know what, the best thing to do is just take 10% profit on the table. And if it carries on going up, I've still got a good position to go the long term, which is what I'm planning. But just because the jump up has been within, as you can see here, 12 of May to 23rd June, it's within a one month period where it's jumped up 30 percent Just take a little bit of risk off the table in case it does go lower. But like I say, a lot of it is to go the long way, and that's I probably won't touch the rest of it for at least a year uh, from now. But just protecting some profits there a little bit uh, with the jump. And as well as that, is that that 10% I can actually go put in some other companies because there was a few companies dipping uh, last week as you know. Mostly the smaller market cap companies um, actually today it was actually a lot of the bigger companies that actually dipped. Some of the companies that have been uh, struggling in my portfolio to, um, over last week was actually pretty good today. So my portfolio wasn't really down much today um, but over the last week is I think I bought a lot of these companies on Monday and Friday. Um, obviously as you guys on the page will uh, know exactly when and how much I increased them by. But first of all, uh, the nice and easy one which is Gang. Um, yeah, I just, the Q1 I've been blown away with and they also brought out preliminary Q2 which was even better than Q1. And these guys are firing on all cylinders and the fact that it's back down at IPO prices over a year ago just absolutely blows my mind because this company has developed so much since then. It's growing at 100% uh, revenue rate. In fact, it's even growing a little bit more than that. And um, yeah, as well as that, even the profitability is uh, getting there, which I thought would not be just there just yet, sometime soon, maybe in the next year. But uh, it looks like we could sneak a little profit this quarter. We'll see what exactly what the numbers gang actually do come out with. But it's absolutely crazy. And the fact that we're back down here, it just blows my mind. So yeah, at one point I was a little bit nervous on this company. I was like, is this actually going to perform? Uh, but the last two quarters have just totally changed my opinion where I'm like, bye, 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 bye. Because um, yeah, it's, it's a really good valuation, which it's at right now, could be pulling in profit. And the thing is, when you have a lot of growth companies, when they bring out good rev revenue, like the stock will go up. But the big thing from growth companies is when they grow revenue and then they get to the point where they still grow revenue and then they get to profitability. That's what Wall Street really likes. And you'll see that with a few stocks like Shopify and like Square. The next catalyst, even Tesla as well, that's another example. The next step up for them to like go bonkers was when it was like, oh, we're actually now making a little bit of profit. So Gang um, is pro probably should be like at least a 25 to 30 dollar stock in my opinion 
and then if we have the profitability it should kick it on a little bit more from there so yeah i'm, I'm really liking this company um at these sort of valuations and uh, yeah i can't believe it 15 dollars. i'm just trying to buy it a lot at the moment and at one point i was a little bit hesitant making it a big position but now i'm actually like trying to focus on actually making it a very decent size position so yeah definitely one to keep an eye on uh definitely uh, one of if not um definitely my top three favorite on this list that i'm going to talk about today and uh, next up is Hugh. yeah so these guys the merge has gone through um but yeah it's really weird because even though the merge has not gone through which really should be the catalyst for Huya yeah, to go up it carries on going down so now that we've kind of got towards the end um uh, of this merger i'm happy to go buy it which i wasn't happy while we were kind of hesitant and it just keeps going down and now i'm happy to carry on buying Huya, yeah, and it's just nuts like a 24 p ratio i think the ford p is like 16 or something on this now uh, it grows at a decent revenue rate uh, profitable really good balance sheet um controls a lot of their streaming service in uh, in china which is uh, you know one of, the, one of the big one of the biggest markets in china that you could have in the gaming side of it will carry on growing more and more streamers yeah i just it's crazy it's crazy i think maybe one of the big fears that people are having now is that because the merger has gone out the window maybe tencent actually released one of their stakes in do you or huya we'll see exactly if that's kind of what's spooking it but yeah i'm really really liking this one as well uh now so uh it's just just nuts valuations absolutely nuts valuations so i just keep buying um i prefer i'll be honest i actually prefer right now huya over alibaba uh, and that's why i actually didn't buy any alibaba recently i've been buying huya um so yeah next up corsair so um yeah these guys again uh just nuts valuation you know this is down at an 18 p ratio i believe the ford p is down at like a 15 now gonna you know it's gonna improve that balance sheet it's profitable uh, gaming's still gonna continue um, i'm kind of looking for q2 now just to see like the growth of like a, a, a cv quarter on a cv quarter just to make sure they're still growing at a decent rate but what i can see here is that they're still the gaming industry is still strong people are still going to game whatever you know it's quite mainstream corsair products are cool products you know whatever products you're looking for headsets component parts lighting they do so much and yeah gaming is come from a bit of a um thing that was kind of maybe not cool i guess um you know a few people would say it's still cool but it's now mainstream cool like you know when you ask kids nowadays what they want to be they probably want to be either a youtuber or they want to be a, a professional gamer and that's kind of where we're at right now and um yeah i i, I really like this one and um I, yeah i at the moment it's kind of crazy because there's a lot of companies i'm looking at going this could be a top three positions and i was going to say there is a top three position but i feel like the market is putting some decent offers out there now and like the likes of gang for example here yeah corsair i think these are really really good valuations especially this one um so yeah re really 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 liking this one at the moment and um, so I'm, I'm trying to be patient and not buy too much but um it's, it's hard to resist it at these sort of valuations um next up DraftKings. Um, actually what I should say as well on Corsair is like one of the things as well is because insiders are selling that might be what's holding the share price back but at some point that's going to uh, stop and that's what you got to remember and that's when I think it will kick on so yeah um, DraftKings so yeah back down at the 40 range I always wanted to get my average down into $40 still not there I'm still in the 50s I think I'm like $50 $51 um, and yeah the the kings of the online gaming that are growing over 100% revenue rate um, and they're only in a few states you put that around the whole of the us expand worldwide yeah i just uh, i'm a big fan of this one it's the reason why it's my biggest position uh, i've talked about it so much on the channel that i'm going to, not going to spend that long on this one but yeah i, I was buying some a little bit more shares in DraftKings. it's very hard to kind of buy loads now because it is such a big position um like if i wanted to kind of really in massively increase my DraftKings position my cash power would probably go totally out the window because uh, it is getting too big now um, but yeah uh, skills and um, did buy some more skills once again this is uh, if you look at DraftKings actually um DraftKings had a, a pretty decent day where the market didn't really same for skills um some money comes to skills when the stock had a uh, um a decent day it started off pretty bad but it, it kind of recovered and yeah um bought some more skills uh, i'm not gonna lie the ones the shares that i'm currently looking at kind of buying um if this stock has a quick uh run up to um let's say 20 20 something dollars what i'm buying now i might release if it does it really quick again like these sort of things but yeah skills this sort of valuation i i do really like um and it is a bit of a volatile stock for sure so if there was any short term bounce uh, just like last time i'd probably actually what i'm buying now is i probably actually release it but while i can just getting that average down a little bit more over time 
um, yeah, not comp I won't complain too much. Um, Turtle Beach, I did average up. I averaged up, um, so I'm up 40% on this one, but I averaged up uh, again. Um, had a had a pretty decent day. Um, it was very very uh, up and down again today. We were up quite a bit. The news came out that someone tried to acquire them, um, and then it went down again. And yeah, it, it seems like a really good purchase to be fair. Because when you look at Turtle Beach, the profit they put in, the revenue they put in, the balance sheet they have, it's currently trading at a P ratio of nine. Like I like it, it would actually make sense for like a Corsair to come in and like buy it or merge it or uh, someone. You know this this is this does look. Um, a perfect acquisition for someone like you could pay like a hundred percent premium on this and you'd be paying at a p ratio of 20 and i can't remember exactly what cash they have on the balance sheet i think it's a, a decent amount as well and yeah it, i mean i i don't normally average up at like uh when i'm up five percent but look at that i mean a 9p ratio for this like normally you're paying a 9p for a company that has a lot of debt has no revenue growth has no profit growth this company is going to be growing at like 10 percent a year with good profit growth and an amazing balance sheet um yeah, I mean, this is the thing. I, I keep one of the things I keep saying is I keep going. Oh, I, I really like Corsair, but then I look at Turtle Beach and I'm thinking Turtle Beach is even cheaper. So I need to be buying more of this one as well. And um, you know, you have to swallow your pride a little bit when averaging up. But I just look at him thinking, it's such a great company at cheap prices. Like a nine p, it's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, we're back at buying this one um, last week. So. Um, I think it was the, the Friday that we bought it. So yeah, we, we picked it up at $28. So yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that one. Um, Gnog um, once again had a little bit of, an, a, bit of a nosedive um, on Friday. As you can see, back down $11 range. And yeah, back down at SPAC prices. And uh, the company's done some pretty decent stuff since then. So yeah, I've talked about a bit. I did a full video on gang Gnog and Draft, um, DraftKings like three, four days ago. So I won't spend too long on that one. Um, Tattoo Chef, I bought some Tattoo Chef on Monday uh, last week, um, so if I can just find where Monday is, um, here, um, around the tw this this uh, $20 range, um, since then it's gone a little bit lower, so I'm um, kind of thinking about buying a little more, we'll see, I, I do really like Tattoo Chef around the, you know, the $18, $19 range, so we'll see what happens, see if it goes lower, it's just, this is once again, the stock market kind of being a little bit weird, and um, I think once Wall Street kind of realizes how good these companies are through some of their earnings uh, when it comes to earnings season, um, I think they've been, I think they've been for a little bit of a shock because this is nowhere near pricing in the amount of deals that they've signed recently with the Kroger deal um, and all the other food, uh, the other deals that have like the Whole Foods. Um, you look at the acquisition they did of the New Foods in Mexico, the guidance update, and the share price hasn't done much. So yeah, I mean. I really like this company. I do really like this one. When I, when I said earlier about talking about top three positions, um, yeah, this is probably the, the, another one that does come into it. So, yeah. And the last one, which I wasn't planning on doing, but it just went, I've got to do it, which is CCL. So you guys, I think most of you know, some of you might not know. Basically, I bought CCL in 2018. Uh, bought it as a bit of a value play. Thought, you know what, I'll get a, a little bit of a share price return every year. I get a little bit of dividend off it. It's a nice little diverse put di diverse one for the portfolio. Um, fast forward um, about two years. Uh, I didn't. It wasn't at the start of 2018. I bought it. I think it was like midway of 2018. So um, it would have been about a year and a half, really. Fast forward like a year and a half. Um, turns out there's a pandemic. Um, obviously, all cruise lines pretty much stopped running. And uh, yeah, this gets absolutely hurt, obviously, and it goes down. And uh, peak of the um, peak of the CV situation down here. Yeah, I was down about eighty percent on the company, uh, which is um, I, I can't I can't even remember what my old average was, but yeah, as you can see, I was down like eighty percent on this company at one point, uh, and yeah, we, we were on a bit of a run uh, eventually. Uh, we we were doing all right, and then last few days, bang! I was far as going to finally get out break even. My average is like thirty three dollars, and as you can see here, we pe we peaked out about thirty ish. And uh, I thought, oh, we're, about, we're so close now, I'm going to get break even and bang. Um, people get spooked about the cases rising and uh, as a lot of travel stocks that have done, they've, they've fallen off a cliff. And um, yeah, I've gone back down to just being so close to being able to sell out break even to falling back behind. And um, yeah, I thought, you know, it's a bit of an overreaction in my opinion. So I'll just keep getting that average lower and lower if I can on Carnival and it'll just help me to kind of get out of this one break even a little bit f faster. So yeah, I kind of bought some, this is no way like, 
I just want to be transparent so you know exactly what I bought, what exactly I sold, and this is no way me saying that I actually think this is a good investment. This is me just trying to bail out of an investment that's gone wrong and not take a nail on it. So yeah, I'm just kind of keeping trying to get that down and down and down. Um, and to the rest of it, you know what, there'll, there'll actually be a point if I actually get my average really low, that I actually go, you know what, I actually might not get out break even, I might actually let this run for the long term. but. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. That's one thing I'm, I'm kind of planning while I see it going even lower, you know, back to $19. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But my, my plan my plan is still to get out of this one break even because it's not my it's not my favorite company on the list anymore now. I think a lot of change since it's took on a lot more debt and the share often it has, it's not the same company and, you know, reduced ships and everything. Um, it's still, I think it's still do okay, but it's not the company that I invested in it, um, you know, two years ago. and. I think it'll be a while till dividends come back. We'll leave it at that one, so yeah. Um, but anyway, those are the stocks that I've been buying, the stocks that I've been selling. Just keep that transparency up so you know all my moves in the stock market. And um, yeah, kind of a little bit of a recap on all of them, which I hope was useful. Um, let me know what you've been buying. Uh, let me know if you sold anything as well. Uh, hope it was useful. As always, smash the like button. Uh, subscribe if you are new. I think a few of you guys have been shouting out for a National Express video uh, at some point. So uh, yeah, let me know if you want that one as well or any other videos as well. Might do a poll or something. But yeah, that's enough of me uh, blabbering on. Um, hope it was useful and I'll see you next one.